Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, we call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth earth peace to people of goodwill. We We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. We alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The company of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. There were not any one needy among them, for as many were as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made to each, as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give Give praise praise to the Lord, for he is good. His His mercy mercy endures endures forever. forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die. I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord punished me. He punished me severely, but did not hand me over to death. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. 
Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the one begotten by him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 You believed, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dude, what have you been smoking? Give me some. That, I suspect, is what many folks would say to me if I told them that I'd had a vision of the risen Christ. And I would probably either say the same or, at very least, think it if someone told me this. So I suppose that the response of, today, of Thomas in today's gospel doesn't surprise me. Now, if you think my remarks are somewhat disedifying, 
or lacking the piety or gravitas of this occasion, I suggest you deal with it. Clearly, the gospel writers had to deal with Thomas's doubt. Following a noble and ancient way of studying scripture, if it's scandalous and yet the author recounts it, the story is almost certainly true. Now, Thomas is my favorite apostle, him and Mary Magdalene. I'll talk about her another time, perhaps. I like him because he's so real. He's direct. He says what others dare not say, what I suspect many Christians dare not say. Researchers into the paranormal tell us that frequently after a death of a loved one, some people often experience ghosts. They see their dead loved ones once or twice, and in some cases quite frequently after the funeral. Usually after a while, these appearances stop. Psychologists explain this away as a phenomenon accompanying the grieving process. It's all in the mind. I agree with the psychologists, despite having had a few weird experiences myself. Of course, I also share the view expressed by Professor Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Of course it's in your mind, Harry. It doesn't make it any less real. So, it seems to make sense that anyone who was not there when the risen Lord appeared to his disciples might be a tad skeptical, like our friend Thomas. Were he a 21st century person, Thomas would probably have responded in a manner of a psychologist, professional or amateur. You imagined it. It was a projection of your sense of loss. Perhaps even, gentlemen, not the ladies present, a certain amount of guilt based on the fact that you, that we, ran away and hid when the system murdered our beloved leader. Indeed. Such frankness, as I imagine the scene, points as much to Thomas's own state of mind after the crucifixion. After all, was he not the one who said, let's go to Jerusalem and die with you a few days before? Thomas's sense of loss is combined with the deep guilt, perhaps, in psychological terms of survivor's guilt, at not being there for Jesus during the Passion. Perhaps this extends to his deep desire to forget he was ever part of the adventure. But the joke's on him. The risen Christ appears to him and ends forever Thomas's possible ducking out of the disciples' mission. Our Gospel tells us that Jesus confronts him, kindly, but firmly, and not just appearing, but calling on him to touch his wounds, to confirm that Thomas and the others are not suffering from some kind of post-trauma-induced paranormal delusion. The text is a bit ambiguous. We're not told that Thomas takes Jesus up on his offer, but we do see Thomas' response. My Lord and my God. The skeptic is converted, his doubts are ended, and in this Thomas becomes the patron saint of skeptical believers everywhere. And not just the patron saint of skeptics. Ancient tradition tells us that Thomas went forth as an apostle, proclaiming the risen Christ, reaching, maybe, many claim, India. Can we prove this conclusively? No. But what we do know is that when Europeans reached India for the first time, they found communities of Christians who traced their origins back to an apostle named Thomas. What can we learn from this? I think here I can speak only for myself. For the most part, I've lived, happily I must insist, in a world governed by reason. My first instinct is to question, to doubt, before I accept anything, I look for evidence. I look for logic. I also explore alternative reasons and causes for everything. Even in my prayer, I find myself more asking God questions than getting answers. And even when I've had profound experiences of connection to God, my instinct afterwards is to ask, is this all in my head? And then, does it make it any less true? I don't think I'm alone in all this. The example of Thomas confronts us and consoles us. 
Thomas confronts us with the challenge of living with questions, even doubts, while remaining disciples of Christ. At no point did Thomas cease to be a disciple. In some ways, for the sake of who Christ was to him, in fidelity to the memory of the man who had captured his imagination and inspired him to follow, Thomas courageously challenges his fellow disciples not to give in to what he thinks is delusional, to not seek the false consolation of easy answers. And yet, Thomas consoles us. He consoles us when, confronted by the truth of resurrection, he embraces Christ's mission more fully. Having resolved his questions, having renewed his faith in Christ, he goes out to proclaim Christ to the whole world. May we, even amidst fear and uncertainty, have the strength to do the same. May the resurrection move us from doubt to faith, from faith to to action. Let us then profess the faith of the apostles by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. Behind every question, every doubt, there is a longing for truth. May the church always be a place of welcome to the questioners and the seekers. May the example of Thomas be an inspiration to all who strive in different ways to follow the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. As we celebrate once again the resurrection journey into new life, May we seek out new ways and new places to proclaim the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. May the example of Thomas give hope to all who lead in society and who doubt themselves. May they be strengthened to carry out their work God has given them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. In the season of the resurrection, we pray that all may be inspired to work for the healing of our pandemic-stricken world. May the resurrection revitalize them in their efforts to cure the sick and to inoculate all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all your prayers and petitions at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, we bring before you all the prayers we make, spoken and unspoken. We bring you also our fears, our doubts, our questions, but above all our hope. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This will be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. This will be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. And so overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, said the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis our Pope, Booty our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Of course, it being Easter, we have a special blessing, a solemn blessing. The response is, of course, Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.